Hello everyone, I greet in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Newton Silas and today we have a very interesting video to react to and this one says letter to Heraclius and this one was sent by the prophet himself, Prophet um, Muhammad, may peace be upon him. I believe that this is going to be a very interesting um, video for us to watch in this time of Eid Mubarak and of course Eid Mubarak to all of you. Um, listening to me so if today happens to be the first time of you checking out my channel don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my facebook and instagram and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm going to check it out so guys before we get down to the video i'm a theologian and i make this video not to discredit anyone's religion this is basically for educational purposes and i believe that at the end of this video we all are going to learn from this so let's get down to the video and then check this out hmm. when the prophet muhammad at a certain time in his messengership in the medina sent letters to various rulers and dignitaries throughout the world at the time including the persian roman emperor for example, the Pope in Rome, Nagus of Abyssinia, Macolchus, the leader of the Copts in Egypt. And one of these letters reached Heraclius. Heraclius was the Roman Emperor at the time. And when Heraclius received this letter, he called for his translator. And he gathered together some of the Arabs who were there at the time. And one of them happened to be Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan was a cousin of the Prophet and he was the leader of Mecca and the leader of the pagans at the time and he happened to be in Jerusalem when Heraclius received this letter. He called for his translator who, translating Heraclius's question, said to them, who amongst you is closely related to that man who claims to be a Prophet? And Abu Sufyan replied, I am the nearest relative to him. And Heraclius said, bring him close to me and make his companions stand behind him. Heraclius told his translator to tell Abu Sufyan's companions that he wanted to put some questions to me regarding that man and that if I told a lie, they should contradict me. So there we are, there we're in the court of Heraclius and Heraclius is saying, okay, you, your companions stand behind you and if he tells a lie, you must tell me that he's lying. Now Abu Sufyan said, by Allah, had I not been afraid that my companions were going to label me a liar, I would have not have spoken the truth about the Prophet. So the first question Heraclius asked Abu Sufyan was this, hmm. what family status has he amongst you? Abu Sufyan replied, he belongs to a noble family amongst us. Then Heraclius asked, has anybody else amongst you ever claim the same before him? I replied, no. Was any amongst his ancestors a king? Heraclius asked. Again, Abu Sufyan replied, no. Heraclius asked, do the nobles or the poor follow him? Abu Sufyan replied, it is the poor who follow him. And then the Heraclius asked, are his followers increasing or decreasing? Abu Sufyan replied, they are increasing. Then he asked, does anybody amongst those who embrace his religion become displeased and renounce the religion afterwards? Abu Sufyan replied, no. Heraclius then said, have you ever accused him of telling lies before his claim? Again, Abu Sufyan says, no. Heraclius says, does he break his truce? Abu Sufyan replied, no. We are at truce with him now, and we don't know what he's going to do in it. Hmm. And Abu wow. Sufyan said, I could not find opportunity to say anything against the Prophet except that time. Hmm. Then Heraclius asked, have you ever had a war with him? And he, Abu Sufyan said, yes. What was the outcome of the battles? Well, sometimes we were victorious and sometimes he was victorious. And then Heraclius asked, what does he order you to do? And Abu Sufyan replied, 
He tells us to worship Allah and Allah alone and not to worship anything along with Him and to renounce all that our ancestors had said. He orders us to pray, to speak the truth, to be chaste and to keep good relations with our mm. kith and kin. Miraculous asks the translator to convey the following. I asked you about his family and your reply was that he belonged to a very noble family. In fact, all the prophets come from noble families amongst their respective peoples. I questioned you whether anybody else among you hmm. claimed such a thing. And your reply was in the negative. If the answer had been in the affirmative, I would have suspected this man was following the previous man's statement. Then I asked you whether any of his ancestors was a king. And you said no. If you had said yes, I would have thought that this man was trying to take back his kingdom. In other words, use the mantle of prophethood to try and take back the kingdom. Then I asked you if he was ever accused of telling lies before this, before his claim to prophethood. And you said no. And then I wondered, how can a person who never lies to people lie about Allah? How could a person who never lies to people lie about Allah. And then I asked you whether the rich people or the poor people follow him and you said that the poor people follow him. And so it is with all the prophets. They have always been followed by that type of people. The prophets this are always followed serious. by the poor and the weak and the oppressed. Then I asked you whether his followers were increasing or decreasing. You said they were increasing and that is the way of true faith until it is complete in all respects. I further asked you if there was anybody who after embracing his religion became displeased and discarded his religion and you said no. In fact this is the sign of true faith when its delight enters the heart and mixes with them completely. I asked you whether he had ever betrayed you said no and so the prophets never betray. I asked you what he ordered you to do and you told me that he ordered you to worship Allah and Allah alone and not to worship anything else along with him and forbade you from worshipping idols and told you to pray and to speak the truth and not commit illegal fornication. If what you said is true, he will very soon occupy this place underneath my feet. And I knew it from the scriptures that he was going to appear. But I did not know that he would be from you. And if I could reach him definitely, I would go immediately to meet him. And if I was with him, I would wash his feet. Heraclius then asked for the letter of the prophet, which was delivered by Dia to the governor of Bura, and then it was forwarded to Heraclius to read. And this is what the letter said. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. From Muhammad, the slave of God and his messenger to Heraclius, the ruler of the Byzantines. Mm -hmm. Peace be upon him who follows the right path. Furthermore, I invite you to Islam. And if you become a Muslim, you will be safe. And Allah will double your rewards. And if you reject this invitation, you will be committing a sin by misguiding your peasants. O people of the scripture, come to a word common between you and us that we worship none but Allah and that we associate nothing in worship with Him and that none of us should take lords besides Allah. Then, if they turn away, say, bear witness that we are Muslims. This is, of course, the translation of a verse of the Quran. And Abu Sufyan added, when Heraclius had finished his speech and had read the letter, there was a great hue and cry in the royal court. And we were turned out of the court. I said to my companions, surely the issue of Ibn Abi Kabsha, and that was a type of derogatory term they used, a nickname they used for the Prophet His affair has become so prominent that even the king of the Byzantines is afraid of him. And then I started to become sure that he would be the conqueror in the near future 
until I embraced Islam. Hmm, well, that's a very interesting um, video, of course, listening to the letter that um, Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, sent to Heraclius, of course, um, that's the then Roman um, king, of course, as of that time, and of course, is the invitation to Islam, and how um, Abu Sufyan was able to interpret um, this um, letter despite the fact that they have a differences of what they believe between Prophet Muhammad may peace be upon him and Abu Sufyan but he was able to testify of course about him, testify about his character, testify about his conduct, testify on what he's telling the people to do which is the worship of the oneness of um, God. Of course it's a good thing as a Christian or even as a Muslim for someone who is not of same religion to be able to testify some fact things you understand about you and not just maybe to say some things just to cover some things up if you look at it even to the point that of course they could wage a war based on their differences when he was asked who normally win then he said sometimes they are victorious and sometimes he was victorious but then he was able to say some certain things you understand, about him, about what he stand for. And that left the king with no option but to seek that he want to meet him immediately, wash his feet and end up um, reverting to Islam. A very interesting video. Of course, I have always said that, of course, I believe you understand that um, Prophet Muhammad, of course, is actually a messenger of God and a servant of God I know that of course I know that everything that he was saying was not just on his own but it was actually God's word that he was saying to the people but then I still believe you understand that I am a Christian I believe in Mr. in Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior I believe in his ministry, I believe in his death, I believe in his resurrection that gives me hope as a Christian because that sounds as the foundation of um, Christianity. Nevertheless, it's not that I am renouncing my religion, but I am saying that this channel, you can both learn about all religion, being it Christianity or Islam. At the same time, you can also uh, educate me about your own um, religion that is if you are a muslim because those are the two major um, religions that made up um, my channel i believe that um, for some people who are hearing this for the first time must have learned um, some few things about uh, prophet muhammad because if you have been in this channel you realize that we have said a lot when it comes to uh, the hadith of the prophet. We have learned a lot of his um, hadith of the prophet. So you can check out some of those videos, of course, on my channel so that you can learn. And if you have anything that you want to contribute or any question you want to ask, you can actually put it at the comment section. Either I answer it. There are a lot of people, learned people who are actually in the channel who might help you understand in answering the question. But I'll always try my best to respond to each and every one of you. Of any question that you may be asking for clarification so this is the end of my video if you like my reaction you should like share and subscribe and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out so you remain blessed and I see you in my next video bye bye